George Bushart, a master breeder of racing pigeons was born on 12 May 1911, in St. Lodewijk Deerlauk, Belgium. He was born into a wealthy industrial family that had a passion for the sport of pigeon racing. His father was a respected pigeon fancier and it was inevitable that the young George would also develop an interest. His brothers, André and Marcel, were also keenly interested as was his sister Alice. At the end of the 1920s the Bouchard family moved to Beveren, Lee where they established a haulage business. At the same time they invested heavily in racing pigeons from various sources including Maurice de la Barre, Vandervelde, Stickelbout and Camine just to name a few. When Alice, his sister, got married to Albert Nuddines, George found in his new brother-in-law a new racing partner and together they bought several birds from auction. When the Bushart family decided to expand their business by opening a carpet factory in Kent, England, it was decided that George should be the one to move to England and oversee the project. It was inevitable that being from Belgium, George's passion for pigeon racing would see him set up lofts at his new home. The birds he stocked were bred by his brother-in-law Albert, and he also obtained birds from his brother, André, who ran the family's carpet-weaving factory in, Dierlicht, Belgium. These were all birds from families that George was very familiar with and ones he believed would be competitive in England. George struck up a friendship with Gil Duncan of Deal. They went into partnership and George's pigeons soon set the racing scene alight with their wins. They bred pigeons such as the Crack, the Copy Cock, the Great Copy, the Bonton, and the Blessé. Between 1956 and 1962 they won over 150 first prizes often taking the first three in the Fed. Soon people started to take notice of these fantastic sprint pigeons and they started to buy them. A question often asked was. Why did his pigeons make such an impact on the racing scene in Britain and why have they stood the test of time and seen many other strains come and go? Well you have to go back in time to what the racing scene was like in Britain all those years ago. After the war and into the 1950s there was not a lot of money about, especially for pigeons. In the 60s times changed, there was a boom and as Prime Minister Macmillan said at the time, you've never had it so good. However, in spite of this newly found affluence, most pigeon fanciers kept small teams of pigeons in back garden lofts. They nearly all raced natural and they raced predominantly traditional families of pigeons that were either handed down from their fathers or bought and swapped locally. Race programs were typically mixed, short races, building up in length throughout the race program to longer ones at the end of the season. Pigeons were thus bred and selected to be good all-rounders. In Belgium however at the time, things were very different. There were specialized race programs. Races were being separated into short, middle distance and long distance races. Specialized clubs were springing up. Fanciers were also concentrating their selection to pigeons to race predominantly short sprint races. A strong gambling culture and good prize money could be won. This drove a desire to obtain the best pigeons for the job, auctions sprang up to fuel this desire for more and faster pigeons. Champion pigeons were soon snapped up by the more wealthy to be put into their lofts. This is where George Bushart comes onto the scene. He was effectively a rich man, he had come to England and he had a passion for fast pigeons. On his visits to Belgium to obtain pigeons, he had a very big advantage. He knew the language, he knew the Belgian pigeon racing scene, and he knew what pigeons were the best at the time, and he bought them. He also had contacts through his brother and brother-in-law. It is rumored that he would travel to many successful lofts simply to buy their champion pigeon. He would then bring them to England and set them up in his loft. He soon made a big impact. He started to win everything. He had introduced fast sprint pigeons using widowhood methods on pigeons that had been selected from years and years of widowhood racing. At the time the English fancier was using predominantly what effectively were just homers on the natural system, which was simply no match. The old English strains were absolutely slaughtered in all types of races. George Bouchard also had this talent of being able to pick pigeons that would breed together to produce outstanding pigeons. This was not just a case of being rich and simply buying top pigeons from winning lofts and putting them together, although this did help. What also helped was that George Bouchard had this great sense of stockmanship. He would choose pigeons of the same shape and form, 
and he could identify in pigeons, qualities that he knew would blend in, but also be passed down throughout the generations. In addition to all this, his pigeons were breeding champions through what geneticists call heterosis. This is hybrid vigor. This usually occurs when highly inbred strains are crossed, but the reason George Bouchard could produce it in his pigeons is that there was a massive pool of winning qualities that were all different, in all these interbreeding pigeons. It was these winning genes that would produce excellent racing characteristics that kept reappearing throughout the lines. So for example you would have pigeons that won because they had fantastic cardiovascular systems, some that had perfect wing formation, others with super efficient metabolisms, others with fantastically powerful musculature. It was these individual characteristics that kept emerging and re-emerging sometimes one at a time, sometimes two or more qualities together, that kept making champions. The whole family was not inbred at all, it was a family of maximum outcrossing but what made it work was that there were no bad genes to get in the way of producing champions. The chromosomes were packed with genes that could only produce these winning characteristics, and different winning characteristics in each subsequent generation. This is why fanciers with distance bushards would suddenly start to throw pigeons that won short sprint races and sprinters that would suddenly breed distance pigeons. Furthermore, this was all fueled even more when people started to cross them with their own strains, their own old winning lines. You now had these qualities that had been selected and honed by the British fancier being added to the continental Belgium winning characteristics. That is why they turned out to be so versatile. They would win from 60 miles and they would win from 500 miles. They would win in a strong headwind day and would win in a blow home. You could race them widowhood and you could race them natural. They won as young birds and straight away were winning as yearlings and old birds. So flyers even today are winning classic races with them when they are up to 7 years old. The other element that made the Bushart so versatile at all distances was that George Bushart did not solely select short distance sprint pigeons, his later acquisitions were equally capable of flying the distance. Fanciers were purchasing offspring from these distance lines and crossing them with the original sprint middle distance Bushart's. This diversity of champion blood also explains why the Bushart's cannot be described as an inbred family of pigeons and why they came in all shapes and sizes and colors. In 1960 Bouchard returned to Belgium. A new phase in the Bouchard began. This new family of George Bouchard birds was dominated by two cocks, Old Sutton and the Clorin. In odd instances he introduced a cross pigeon, this pigeon was normally from the Rossin lines. In this case it was Pluto, which was also a great winner for him. Pluto was through the Clorin on his dam side and was therefore a related pigeon. The other pigeon sometimes in at the base was a cock named Young Shonen. He was the grandsire of Rapido through the dam and appears twice in the hen of the gold mine pair. The cock is a combination of Sutton and Clorin only and the pair are therefore totally dominated by these two cocks. It is this basic thread or pattern that is intriguing. Certain pigeons become familiar by the number of times they crop up and the key pigeons which stand out in this family are, Old Sutton, Clorin, Crayon, Little Black, and the hens such as the copy hen, Sutton Wit Pen and the Sutton Hen. We don't know the criteria by which George selected his foundation birds, but it is apparent that the old Sutton was a known producer before George bought him, also that Sutton Wit Pen was a winner of a young bird classic with around 25,000 pigeons competing when he bought her. The Clarin had won 33 positions racing before he purchased him and he sired the Crayon, whilst Little Black was a direct son of old Sutton. These pigeons formed the base of the family and carried a link back to the previous family through the copy hen 211. The facts of studying George Bouchard's methods are quite simple. They are that the Clorin was mated to two half-sisters, both out of the old Sutton. This type of mating has been referred to by others as being line-bred to both Sutton and the Clorin. From the number of times it occurs in the Bouchard pedigrees, it is double line breeding to two males simultaneously. The normal penalty for inbreeding is a loss of vigor and a subsequent decline in performance. Double line breeding to two males simultaneously arrests the decline in vigor. On studying George Bouchard's pedigrees, one very significant factor that emerges is that almost without exception the Clorin was always mated to the direct daughters of old Sutton. Always the pattern is repeated, 
Clorin to the hens from Sutton, either direct daughters or inbred granddaughters, but always in that order of precedence, Sutton first, and Clorin in the second step. This is the real skill behind the phenomenal bush arts and the sole reason they are unique amongst racing pigeons. The third family of bush arts owes something to the earlier or original bush arts, for one of the important base pigeons is the copy hen, born in 1959. Now George most certainly saw something special in her to choose her out of all he had bred. The facts confirm his view for she was the dam of little black, black bull, big black and 981 when made it to old Sutton. Gradually the old copy bloodlines which were made up of, Tito and Crack, were replaced with the new Claren and Sutton bloodlines. Bushart described them as smaller, better handling, with the ability to fly further. Throughout the 70s and early 80s, these new Claren and Sutton pigeons were sold into the UK and just as before, Bushart pigeons dominated the racing results. Champion Rapido was bred from the Claren and Sutton family. His offspring were noted for their sprinting ability. Also as a point of interest, Rapidos offspring were very often pied, gay pied and even pure white. An entire dynasty of sprint to middle distance racing pigeons were established upon Rapidos bloodlines. George Bushart hysteria was by now reaching stratospheric proportions. George started to hold an annual sale in England. The racing performances of the famous Bushart soon started to become legendary. Ken Aldred bought two pigeons, one of them the famous stock bird the Little Black. She produced pigeons that were totally unbeatable. George Corbett bought stock from George Bushart and from Tom Larkin to produce the famous dark ones. The most famous bird to come from these pigeons is probably the copy cock. This pigeon went on to breed hundreds of first prize winners, and they could also fly the distance. One fancier topped the federation from over 500 miles from two different race points on the same day. Another buyer was Danny Shalley. He was an experienced racer who had for years flown the old long-distance English strain of Fuller Isaacson. He and a friend decided to try out these newfangled bush arts. They purchased 16 young birds from Tom Larkin and split them. Danny had amongst his selection a medium to small blue checker hen. She was a double granddaughter of Little Black. When she won the Open Wessex Combine she was put straight into the stock loft and went on to become one of the best breeding hens that this country has ever seen. She bred no less than five other Combine winners and fifteen Federation winners when paired to each of the other cocks that came with her. Even more amazing was that her offspring not only won races but also went on to breed even more champions. One of her young birds, called Moneypacker, for good reason, won four first Open Combines, a first federation and fifth combine, and went on to breed Wilbur, to win the Central Southern Classic Wren race from France. She also bred Blue Steel to win first open Parkstone, first Dorset Fed, Imperial Black and Blackfire who both went on to take first Solent Fed. At one time Danny had in his loft 40 federation winners and 5 combine winners. Other famous bush arts and bush art flyers were the Larkin pair of Mr. and Mrs. Shuttleworth of Harrogate, Billy Parks of Northern Ireland, John Palmer's number one and number two pair. Bill Johnston with his famous Bushart old man. John Hodgson of Annan. The list went on and on. Johnston Eagleson and Sons went on to win over 50 first open combines with the Bushart's. People who purchased the Bushart's were ending up with not one but a whole loft full of champion birds. Alf Wright was another example. He obtained birds from George Corbett and started to then breed his own champions. Clapper had 36 firsts, Twirler had 30 firsts and a pigeon called Slimmon had 20 first positions. Other famous Bushart flyers were Arthur Beardsmore, with his Terra Bushart's, Little Terra had 12 firsts, Short Terra had 12 firsts, Flying Solo had 12 firsts. Fred Elliott and his famous Euro Bushart's. The Highview and Starview Bushart's. The list goes on and on. In 1982 Bushart held a final dispersal sale. It turned out to be three clearance sales on the 9th, 10th and 11th October. 274 birds were entered into the sale, of these 271 were bred by George Bushart. All birds were sold. This sale shortly preceded his death. Bushart's can be said to be the most versatile strain in the world. In recent years, 
Bushart's were creating quite a stir by winning high British prestigious races in Northern Ireland. The amazing achievements of the legendary Ron Williamson from Portadown in Ireland are amongst some of the most recent. His winners include many pigeons to win in birdages in excess of 20,000 pigeons, including many multiple winners at this level of competition. Never has a family dominated so heavily against this level of birdage in races, over 13 times first against on average 20,000 plus birds. It is highly unlikely that this has happened anywhere in the world before where a single pigeon fancier with a single strain of birds has attained such a legacy of results.